Okay, what's up? Is this thing on? Okay, so today we're gonna look at um, FRQ for Unit 6 um, on AP Classroom, and um, it is one week until the AP Bio test on next Monday, the 18th, and um, so uh, yeah, just wanted to go through as many of these as possible. So, um, all right, let's jump in. I think I did this, but this is kind of a dry run for me, so it should be a little more akin to what you'll be experiencing. Here we go. So the first thing that jumps out at me is visual. I actually just heard a podcast the other day that indicates that most of us are visual learners. We talk about like multiple intelligence types and, and whatnot, but um, learn that actually most of us, like over 85% of us as human beings are visual learners, okay? So um, I'm now feeling a little more comfortable saying, you know what, you should just look at the pictures first, okay? So this one's got a diagram. It's talking about luciferase, okay? So this is obviously the enzyme that breaks down the devil, Okay, and um, you gotta have luciferase. Ace means enzyme. Enzyme is a protein. Proteins are made from genes. Genes are DNA segments. Okay, so we're talking about transcription. We're talking about translation. These are all the things that should, could just kind of be like rolling around in your mind. And again, you should talk to yourself when you are doing the AP test because it helps things work out. So it helps me talking it out with you and it'll help you talking it out with yourself. Okay, I've also got a notebook. Okay, so I can write down things um, as they come to me in case I need to make notes because that's super important as well, okay? So um, I see plasmid. Plasmid means that we are um, dealing with a circular piece of DNA. That's what plasmid is, a circular piece of DNA usually located within bacteria. It could also be located within mitochondria or chloroplasts because, of course, those used to be bacteria before they were endosymbiotically um, captured and um, co-opted into their um, intracellular functions in eukaryotes as the birth of eukaryotes two billion years ago pretty freaking sweet okay so we've got genes on these plasmids because plasmids are simply dna and genes are simply sections of dna making um, proteins right so we've got a gene that um, is being transcribed by rna polymerase and we're going to make the protein luciferase which is an enzyme Okay, and um, they looks like we got some GMO business. We are going to be genetically modifying this bad boy, putting the gene into the plasmid, and then it says introduce plasmids into T lymphocytes. Had we been in school right now, I would have um, taught you about the immune system, the lymphocytes, lymph like lymphatic system, lymph nodes is what gets swollen when you get um, strep throat. This, these are white blood cells, okay? Leukocytes are white blood cells, um, and uh, leukemia is, a, you know, a cancer of, of, um, of the immune system, white blood cells. Lymphocytes are going to be, and the lymphatic system is basically the um, immune sewer system, right? Kind of like you got blood vessels all throughout your body. You've got lymphatic vessels all throughout your body and they're responsible for collecting all of the waste and, um, and being, having it filtered out. Um, in addition to the way the blood does that as well, but a lot of battles, a lot of white blood cell immune system battles happen in the lymphatic system. Okay. So you've heard of, maybe you heard of killer T cells, helper T cells, antibodies, um, B cells, helper B cells, you know, all these things um, should maybe like blush your mind the first time you see this, right? No, I'm taking a lot of time on it because I'm excited and I want to teach, but you should take maybe two minutes looking at this thing, trying to understand what's going on here. So we've got, um, well, the other things that are going on here are um, the CD3 gamma gene and upstream regulatory sequences, okay? So upstream means, you know, upstream rather than downstream. Um, and uh, so they're talking about regulatory sequences. This is a sequence on the DNA that um, controls transcription, right? So you've got upstream regulatory sequences, the CD3 gamma gene, um, and then the, tr the transcribed region, okay, which basically allows the, if we're having transcription, we allow the RNA polymerase to bind and transcribe, or we don't, okay? So you should be thinking LAC operon and TRIP operon and um, the uh, control of gene expression in addition to your biotech and, and GMO. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna, okay, I'm scrolling down to see more of a graph here. Okay, so we got PD, 
PCD3 gamma, and then a whole bunch of numbers, right? Okay, so parent plasmid, parent plasmid with non-active promoter. Um, then we've got the luciferase gene. It looks like it's just like little sections of genes. It says relative luciferase activity, okay? So some of these, you know, we basically luciferase activity is the dependent variable, the data that they are collecting to see whether we've actually freaking made the luciferase correctly, okay? Because if it's active and it's working, then we've made it correctly, meaning that we've read the section of the DNA correctly, transcribed it, translated it into the protein, game time okay so um, there's actually a bunch of variants here right and um, so we can see that the parent plasmid has virtually low whenever you look at a graph you look at the lowest you look at the highest and you look at the trend okay so the lowest one is parent plasmid obviously because the parent plasmid doesn't have the luciferase gene at all it doesn't have these the promoter region you know it just doesn't have that extra stuff um, or actually, it looks like it has the luciferase gene, but it doesn't have any of the upstream regulatory sequences. As you can see from the picture in, um, in that graph, it just has luciferase gene. So it looks like we kind of need a promoter region to allow 